Now, today, we've all been gobsmacked by the ash cloud from the volcanic eruption in Iceland, resulting in the closure of British airspace for the first time since 9-11. The ash has caused massive inconvenience for travellers all over the country and across Europe. Here at The One Show, we want to get to the bottom of these explosions, so we have hired a volcanologist, a man who knows everything there is to know about Big Bangs. Today, we're calling him Dr. Volcano. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain Too much of love drives a man insane You broke my will, but what a thrill Goodness gracious, great balls of fire This is the stuff of Hollywood Smoke me a kipper, I'll be back for breakfast That's when things get really exciting Goodness gracious, great balls of fire Please welcome Durham University's Dr. Dougal Jerram, Dr. Volcano. Dr. V or Dougal, welcome to the program. What on earth is going on today? Well, today and for the last couple of days, there's been a rather large volcano going off in Iceland. And I guess what's special about that volcano at the moment is it's charged with gases. And those gases mean that it's actually erupting ash high into the atmosphere. Now, ash itself is actually the material that's made from broken bubbles. So as the bubbles get closer to the surface and expand and explode, it's, it's making really fine material go high up into the atmosphere. Come on, let's see some, because you've bought yeah, some I of this very offending ash in yeah. here today. Here's uh, some examples of ash from uh, the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. And go on, get your fingers dirty. Get, get, get into on. that. You'll feel it's really, really fine material, isn't it? It's almost silty, sort of muddy material, getting into almost every nook and cranny. Now, you can imagine that going up, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 feet into the air, yeah. right into the area where planes normally cruise, and getting into engines. That would cause all sorts of problems. Well, well you say that, but I mean, I've got it on my fingers, and it feels like a fine powder. Could that actually, that really could bring down a plane? Yeah, there's tons and tons of this material being ejected into the sky. And the problem is, you imagine driving your car into a sandstorm. All of the sand's going to get into all the air ventilation, into the carburetor. It's all going to go and then stop. And that was, that's what happens to aircraft engines if they mm. fly into a, into a volcanic ash cloud. So it affects engines. Does it affect us? Should well, we be worried about our health? At the moment, we're, we're, we're perfectly okay with it high up into, in the atmosphere. In fact, probably what it's going to do is, is, if it's a clear night tonight, it's going to give us a lovely sunset. So there's one, one sort of uh, rose petal that it will give us. And it's caused really serious um, disruption for lots of people. Um, how long is it going to go on for? Because John, Don's going on tour, you know, he needs Why to know what's going go on. Away? Yeah, this is one of the problems we have with volcanoes. <laughs> we can kind of monitor them and predict uh -huh. when they're going to start erupting, mm. but how long they exactly go on for, we don't know. This particular volcano can erupt for a short period of time, or it can be months, weeks, even, you know, even years. Because you would have thought with all the technology we do have in this world that we'd be able to predict when they'd go off. We could have given people a warning. Well, I indeed, that's the case. And for volcanoes that we see on Iceland and in North America and so on, they're very well monitored. So actually, a couple of days prior to an eruption, you get triggers in the ground that tell you something's going on. I don't think anybody on. ever thought there were volcanoes in Iceland. The whole island's made funny? up of volcanoes. Isn't it's that actually, wild? Uh, yeah, for, 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 for a land that's termed ice, it's actually very, very hot and, and, and molten rock oh. everywhere. Okay. Predicting volcanoes. I know there's going to be one in this studio right now because Mount One Show <laughs> is just about to erupt. Take us through it, Dr. Volcano. <laughs> Okay. You need some help too, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, what we've got here is um, just a mock-up of a volcanic system. But, you know, there's a serious element to this. We're trying to explain what happens when you have liquid and gas under pressure in a magma chamber below a volcano, release the top of it, and you're going to get an eruption. Okay, so we've got our okay. own gas. That's yeah. my job, isn't it? I'll yes, I hear, I hear, you. you're just, I, just I, I hear you've gas. got good dancing legs, so if yeah, you, can, all right. you can pump up the volume there. And what liquid have we got in there? What yeah, we've got in here is we've got some vinegar, some bicarbonate of soda, and some food colouring. Right. And we need to get that up to a reasonable reasonable volume okay. of material. Keep and going, materials you find going. in any, any kitchen as well, oh, aren't they? It's starting, it's starting. One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> eruption. Okay. And, and what we've demonstrated there is that with, with pressure building up, you can actually explode things. We, we exploded, what, a metre above our heads there. Mm -hmm. You imagine what's happening if you've got a massive magma chamber to tap yeah. full of, of tonnes and tonnes of gases just wanting to escape, a bit like a massive champagne bottle. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for showing us. Thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and as I said, it has caused serious disruption.